artist Robert Rauschenberg visited Tokyo. A young art artist in the audience, Ushio Shinohara, jumped up on the stage and presented Rauschenberg with a very faithful looking copy of a work Rauschenberg had made called Coca-Cola Plan, which incorporates, which incorporated an actual Coca-Cola bottle. So, as we know, Rauschenberg was already appropriating things from the real world and bringing them into his art. All right. It was a very audacious thing for anyone to do. Rauschenberg was just beginning to, to rise in his international fame. Many of the young artists in Japan who had read in their local art magazines, and there was not a lot of information in those days, it wasn't like today with the internet, many of the young artists in Japan who had read about this uh, artist, Rauschenberg, were quite intrigued and were in the audience. So for the young Yushio Shinohara to run on stage and present Rauschenberg with a copy of one of his works that Shinohara himself had made was a very audacious and bold thing to do. As we learned tonight, Rauschenberg was receptive to that gesture, which says a lot about his aesthetic attitude, his personal sensibility. Actually, Jasper Johns mm -hmm. and Rauschenberg were so generous to you, Ushio, that they also introduced you to Marcel Duchamp. And in fact, uh, actually on the imitation box, you had done a very interesting piece to Marcel Duchamp that they liked very much, and they actually showed it to Marcel Duchamp. And because Marcel Duchamp liked it so much, in 1965, the Copley Foundation, as I understand, gave you a $2,000 scholarship yep. uh, to try to bring you to the United States. And because of your visa problems or something, you finally, was the Rockefeller that he brought you to New York. Yep. Um, but uh, what's very interesting about this exhibition, and I'd like to just pay homage, and I'd love to hear the academics talk about this, but uh, Rauschenberg seemed to be extraordinarily generous to you as an artist when you were obviously subverting him, copying him, multiplying his art pieces. He embraced you very much like Andy Warhol. When people copied Andy Warhol, Andy Warhol said, oh, I love it, do it more. Rauschenberg graciously, he didn't say, who is this copyist, ass, young whippersnapper. He actually liked your work, he wanted to collect your work, he brought it back and talked about your work. So it's interesting how Rauschenberg and John were very instrumental and embraced the, the Japanese avant-garde. And it really helped you. And it was, you know, I don't know any other artist who was brought to America because of Marcel Duchamp, uh, but that, or, or Jasper Johns or Rauschenberg, but I think they... You know, <laughs> In 64, Rauschenberg came to Tokyo to, as a set designer of Mass Cunningham Dance Company. And there he met Ushio Shinohara, who already knew about him as a star of the art world. Actually, Rauschenberg just got the award, grand prize of painting at the Venice Biennale, so he is no doubt a star. And uh, here is a starry eyed Japanese painter who actually had a very interesting work about him using the idea of imitation art. So that's the real exchange, how they interacted and how Rauschenberg didn't really, uh, how shall I say, not comfortable, didn't feel comfortable about what he was doing because what uh, Ushio uh, is, was doing is actually turning the table around and uh, critique his appropriation. <laughs> so, what's interesting about this show is like just to illustrate and display the dynamic of this intercultural artistic uh, interactions between, of course, American art was the most forceful trend in the 60s, right? And Japanese art world was, is still kind of young, emerging. There was no systematic gallery system. Ushio didn't even have a patron or gallery. So there is this kind of imbalance between the in the power dynamics in the international art world. But Tokyo was like quickly catching up. And it's, 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 
What's great about tonight's evening is it takes what everybody assumes is an American subject and turns it into something that just goes beyond America. And that's absolutely where we need to be. Stop thinking about national boundaries, except as you know, uh, a challenge to cross and to change ourselves. Thank you.